Greetings YouTube, Joe here with Colonation Media and welcome back to the very next episode of Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness. This is episode number 36 and in this episode we're moving on to the regular or intermediate cards and we're going to start with the Charmander card. So obviously we're starting with Charmander because that would be the only thing that would make sense. And as you can see on this board there's two fire types um, on the board. We have three ground types, two ice types, three flying types, and two fla- not flying, fighting types. Or no, three fighting types. I don't know what I'm talking about. There's one of each of those. So yeah, just deal with it. We're gonna start off against this Spiro. And you're gonna want to catch this Spiro. Why? I know it's not evolved, all that stuff, not very powerful. Actually, it does have pretty decent attack. Uh, the problem becomes that it's so fragile. But it's the only flying type on the board that's going to know the Drill Peck move, the rest know Aerial Ari Ace, which is not as powerful, of course, as Drill Peck. So you want to stick with Spiro, and we're going to fight this Machop. The fighting type, and obviously Spiro is going to have the type advantage, and we may even be able to knock it out one hit. Uh, almost. Not quite. Machop is pretty bulky. Um, it's not. Uh, it's not really bulky. It's just bulky enough to not be knocked out in one hit uh, by most attacks, even ones that are super effective on it. But because we do have the speed advantage, and Spiro is going to have a speed advantage on a lot of Pokemon. Um, we're able to knock out the Machop before it can do enough damage to knock us out, which is kind of the whole point of Pokemon in the first place. That was a little bit redundant. Anywho, let's see what the next move is going to be here. We have these two question mark panels, and I'm going to do the one next to the Machop with Spiro, which is an EP plus two, and I'm going to give both of the EPs back to Spiro, so Spiro is back up to two EPs now instead of the zero. And the other advantage that Spear is going to have in addition to being super effective on the fighting type Pokemon is that he also will be able to resist the ground type Pokemon who try to use Earthquake and obviously that can't hit him because he's flying type. Yo! Alright, so let's take our chances against this ground type right here. And it's gonna be Diglett which is very very fragile. Diglett kind of sucks when it comes to defending against any type of attack really it's quick but it has low HP and very very low defenses as you can see drill peck is not even super effective but it knocks it out in one hit and that's that Diglett couldn't even hit us with that earthquake alright next move we have the question mark panel up above Diglett and I'm going to use Spear to get that one, and it's just an EP plus one, so I'll just give that EP right back to Spearow, so didn't have any net gain or loss there. And now we have a couple more options. Um, let's see what I want to do here. You could always go against that fire type with Spearow, but I don't know if I trust that. I don't trust Spearow to be able to survive. So we'll use Charmander to go against this ice type down here. And not only is it an ice type, but it's also a water type. Sfeel is water and ice, and it also has the thick fat ability, which means it's resistant to um, fire type moves as well as ice type moves. Um, not a type advantage, but uh, blah, 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 whatchamacallit, it does half as much damage as it normally would, so it's basically like it not being very effective. And since he's also water type, ice just is going to do no damage to Sfeel whatsoever. But we don't have to worry about that. And he doesn't know a water type move, which really, really works in our favor. All he knows is ice beam, and as long as I don't get frozen, I should be okay here. I did get the burn hacks on him as well, so he should go down in this turn. If I'm not mistaken, the burn should kill him. Or the flamethrower, that works too. Can't say I have anything to complain about there. Get out of here, Sveal. Go home. You're drunk. No, he's not drunk. Kind of looks like he is the way he rolls around back and forth, though. Alright, moving on. Uh, let's see, we do have that one question mark panel left, and that's obviously going to be the Master Ball. 
Um, but let's see, do I trust Go Spiro going against that fighting type? I don't know if I do. Hmm. We also have two more flying type panels, two fire type panels, and two ground type panels. And a nice type hanging out up there. Okay. Let's... You know what? I'm gonna go against uh, that fighting type in the corner like I was originally thinking about doing. And it's Makohita, who also has the thick fat ability, so this could be useful thinking about catching him here. Um, simply for that reason, uh, so he can resist Ice Beam and Flamethrower. And we'll go from there. That that could be really useful or really bad. Makohita is very slow. Um, so it could be that it just isn't fast enough to take out the fire types, but I'm going to try. We're going to go against the fire type Growlithe, who hopefully doesn't have Intimidate. No, he doesn't, which means he has the Flash Fire ability, but that doesn't mean anything for us. Of course, Growlithe is going to be a lot faster, and he goes for the Flamethrower, which kind of does a lot of damage. Didn't get uh, burned there, so that's good. And, oh, Brick Break does about the same amount of damage as Flamethrower did. Which means that we're in trouble because Growlithe is faster and he's going to be able to kill us first. Crap. Oh, and I'm burned, so I definitely am going to lose because the burn hacks will also decrease your attack power, as you can see there. Yeah, okay, so I lost this battle. And I guess that uh, will allow me to explain what happens if you do lose a battle. Uh, you don't have to start all over again. You don't, you know, have to start the card over again either. Um, all that happens is that you basically wasted an EP, which might in turn cause you to have to start all all over again. But uh, that's not the case here, uh, seeing as how I still have Pokemon with EPs left and opportunities to get Bingo and another Master Ball. So maybe catching that Makuhita wasn't the best idea, but. Uh, it was something I haven't tried before, and I figured I uh, might as well go for it. Alright, so we have the ground type, and I'm going to use the question mark panel and get that with Charmander. And then I'm going to go against the ground type in the corner, which is Cubone, with Makohita's last EP. And we do need to get a bingo here. So what I'm going to do is not risk anything and use the Master Ball that we just uncovered to catch said Cubone, because Cubone is awesome actually. Uh, he's very underrated. Uh, his attack power is just amazing and he learned some great moves too. Okay, let's see. So we have Cubone with two EPs and we'll use Bingo to give the EP to Charmander. So he has one now and we can take on the Ice type over on the left hand side. Eh. Should I or should I not? Actually, what I'm gonna do before I do that is use Cubone to take on the Growlithe. Since I know it doesn't have the Intimidate ability, I should be okay. Uh, Growlithe will be faster, and he's going to go with uh, the Flamethrower, obviously. And as long as I don't get burned here, or a critical hit. Thank you. Don't burn. Don't burn. Don't burn. Yes. All right. Earthquake is going to be able to knock out Growlithe in one hit. At least it should. Die, Growlithe. Thank you. Goodbye. I love killing puppies. It's so much fun. Yay, dead puppies. Dead puppies give us bingo. Who do we give this EP to? Uh, blah, blah, blah. What do we think here? Let's give it to Spiro because we do have a fighting type up here. And so we have the two flying types. The ground type, a fire type, a fighting type, and an ice type, which is pretty much all the types, actually. Um, but I'm going to go against this ice type panel over here, which turns out to be snow run, pure ice type, so no water type, uh, dual type this time, uh, which is good news for Charmander, uh, because Flamethrower will be super effective. And that's going to knock out snow run in one hit, because he's definitely not bulky enough to take that. So, And Charmander is just awesome. I love Charmander, and Charmander loves me. No bingo that time, so we're going to have to go against the ground type in square one, and that's going to be Fampy. We have Spiro, who is going to be immune to his earthquake attack, so even though Drillpeck is going to take quite a few hits to knock him out, uh, because Fampy just has awesome uh, 
Defense should take three hits. Unless we get a critical hit. Will I get lucky? No, not quite. Oh, it might take four hits. Dang, I hope not. Not that it matters, because he can't do any damage to us whatsoever. Oh, he hangs on with two HP. Lucky, you're just stalling. Stalling the inevitable. There we go. Fampy goes down to the drill peck. Took four drill packs to knock out that Fampy. That just is a testament to how uh, defensively bulky that Fampy is. And that's going to net us a bingo and one extra EP, of course. And let's see who we want to give that to. We have a fire, flying, and fighting types left. I guess I'll just give that to Charmander for now. And we'll take on the last... Uh, well, we have one more fire type. Let me see. And we have a flying type here. We'll use Charmander to take on the flying type. And the flying type is Talo, who, while very quick, is also very, very fragile. Which means, uh, as long as I don't get killed by Aerial Ace here, which I shouldn't, Flamethrower should be able to knock out this Talo. Perhaps even in one hit. If I get a burn hex, maybe... Or maybe it'll just kill him. Oh yeah, just killed him. Okay. Well, I guess we really didn't have to worry about that square too much. That's fine by me. Taylor goes down, and that gives us the diagonal bingo. We have three squares left. Okay. Fire, flying, and fighting are left. We'll use Cubone to take on the fire type square, which turns out to be a Torchic, which is a pure fire type. Which means Cubone will have no problem taking it out with one earthquake. Again, assuming that I don't get burned from Flamethrower. Thank you. No burning. No burning whatsoever. Earthquake is going to knock out Torchic. Goodbye, Torchic. That would actually be a good choice to, uh, to capture if we didn't already start with a fire type at the beginning. But I like Charmander, so I'm not complaining. I'm not complaining at all. We'll give the EP back to Charmander yet again. And we'll use Spiro against the fighting type. Uh, bleh. Spiro against the fighting type Mankey, who is a pure fighting type. And Drillpeck should knock it out in one hit because Mankey just doesn't have uh, great defenses. In fact, I believe he has better special defense. I want to say. Not entirely positive on that one. Alright, another EP. We'll give that to Spiro. And we have the last square here. A flying type. And it's Pidgey. Normal and flying type. And Pidgey really isn't that powerful uh, on its own. It's much better off after it evolves, and then even more so once it evolves the second time into Pidgeot at level 36. Uh, and as you can see, it's pretty fragile. Goes down in one hit to Flamethrower from Charmander, and we get the triple bingo, and we complete the Charmander card. Yay! And we're gonna get blah, 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 480 Pokey coupons for our efforts. Which is just fantastic. We're also going to receive a Max Ether for completing the card for the first time. And that's going to be it for this episode, guys. In the next episode, we will be taking on the second regular or, or intermediate of the Battle Bingo cards. But thank you very much for watching and stay tuned for episode number 37. Game on.